Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching my video. Today we're going to be talking about the measures of arcs. And there's three different cases. A minor arc, a semicircle, and a major arc. So let's take a look together. Ready? Um, it says the measure is less than 180 and equal to its central angle. That's what a minor arc is. The measure is less than 180 and equal to its central angle. What am I even talking about? Well, First of all, the symbol for an arc is a little arc or a little curve above those letters. And here it's saying the measure of arc BC, so if I look from point B to C, is this. This is the arc. The circle is composed of arcs, and all the arcs would add up to 360 degrees because there's 360 degrees in a circle. A minor arc is just like an angle. Okay, we would talk about acute, right, obtuse, except we're dealing with 180 as that kind of marker. So a minor arc is an arc where it's a curve part around the circle that's less than 180 degrees. It's also equal to its central angle. The central angle, okay, the central angle is this angle here, angle BAC. So the arc BC is equal to its central angle, BAC. So if I said to you the measure of arc BC was 135, then the measure of angle BAC, that angle there, is also 135. An arc is congruent to its central angle. So if I see the arc is 135, then the central angle is 135. Now notice the central angle is created from the center of the circle. Okay, the central, central angle is created from the center of the circle, and it's got the radii stretching out to the edge of the circle, and then it's creating that arc. This arc would be called the intercepted arc of that angle, and again, they are congruent to each other. A semicircle is half of the circle, and it's actually equal to 180 degrees. So this would be an example of a semicircle. A semicircle, if I follow the letters, would be G, H, F. I could also call it arc F, H, G, but I need those letters going around the circle in that order. Also notice BC only had two letters in it. That would mean it's a minor arc. It's going to be an arc that's less than 180. If I have three letters to name an arc, it's going to be 180 or more, which is going into that major arc. So the, arc of, the measure of the arc of GHF is 180. That would mean that that angle of GHF, which kind of looks ridiculous, it would also be 180. And actually that should say GEF. I got to fix that because it's a straight line. A major arc is greater than 180 degrees and equal to its central angle. And the way we figure out the measure of a major arc is we look at B, C, D, this entire arc, and really what we do is we do 360, the measure of all the arcs added up, subtracted by the other arc that's left over. Okay, so the way I would calculate the measure of this arc, since it's not really created by an angle, is to take 360 and subtract the other arc, the remaining arc that's there. So if I said to you that that remaining arc of um, BD was 135, then that would tell me to do 360 minus 135, and that arc is 225. And that arc would correspond to its angle. Angles are usually not listed as 180, but just to show you that that would be what that angle is. If I did a 225 degree, let's say, rotation, that's where that point would be. Let's take a look at some problems here on my screen. First one says, name all of the minor arcs. So minor arcs are less than 180 degrees. I've got five of them here. Now it does say here as a note, EC is a diameter. It's really important to know that that's a diameter because a diameter cuts a circle in half. And if it cuts a circle in half, then it's 180 degrees. And I need to use that because my minor arcs need to be less than 180. So if I wanted to start naming some arcs, DE is definitely a minor arc. Okay, so D to E. Notice when I say D, E, it's going this way and it's not going around. If it was going around, it would have to use three letters, D, C, E, and that's definitely a major arc, not a minor. C, D, so from C to D. E, B, it's a tiny little arc. Arc D, B, so this one, okay, the minor arc D, B, if it's named with two letters, it means it's going this way and not this way because that would be greater and BC. Awesome. 
So now we've got some questions. It says, if the measure of angle BAE, so this angle here is 40, and CAD, the arc, is 100, find all of these other missing parts. So if I wanted to find the measure of arc BE, okay, I know that my central angle is 40 degrees. So the arc of BE would also be 40. If I know that this arc BE is 40, and I want to find arc BC. Well, this arc and this arc should make 180 degrees because that's a diameter. So 180 minus 40 is 140. Now, if the measure of arc BC is 140, then its central angle, BAC, is also 140. Now, DE. If I wanted to look at DE, well, let's see. If we know that this is 40 and this is 140, and we know that the measure of angle CAD is 100. If this is 100, then DE has to be 180 minus that 100. So DE is 80. The measure of angle DAE okay, would be the same as the measure of arc DE, which is 80. The measure of arc DB would be this 80 plus 40. We can add arcs together, guys to get 120. Measure of angle DAB, which goes to the center now, is also 120. And the measure of arc DC, well, if the central angle is 100, then arc DC is also 100. Awesome. Let's take a look at the semicircles that are here. If I said to you name all of the semicircles, and I'm noticing that it says EC is the diameter and DF is the diameter, that's where my semicircles are built. I wouldn't be able to say BC is a diameter. I'm using exactly what it's telling me. So therefore my diameters would be arc D, E, F. That would be a semicircle. Arc F, C, D. So D, E, F is one half. F, C, D is the other. Then I can also say E, D, C. If I'm looking at my EC as a diameter now. And then CFE. So I have four of them. Okay. If the measure of angle EAF is 110, so this entire angle is 110, and BF is equal to 60, arc BF, find arc BE. So if this angle is 110 and this is 60, 110 minus that 60 would give us 50. Okay. So arc BE is 50. Arc BC. Now, let's think about this. If I know this is 50 and this is 60, and this is part of a semicircle, which is 180, 60 plus 50 is 110. 180 minus that 110 would give me um, 70. And if that is 70, then 60 plus 70 is that 130. If arc BC is worth 130, then angle BAC is also 130. DE. I'm going to know that DE has to be 70 for the same reasons that we knew that this was 70, because 60 plus 50 plus 70 is that 180. There are also vertical angles. You could use that. DAE, okay, is 70. DB, that arc, I would add 70 plus 50 to get 120. Therefore, the angle, the central angle is also 120. And then DC. So if this is 70 and this is a uh, diameter, 180 minus that 70 is that 110. Okay, last one, name all of the major arcs. So major arcs are arcs that are greater than 180. So they go past a semicircle. Minor is less than 180. Semicircle would be exactly halfway through and a major is larger than it. So name all of the major arcs. C, B, D is definitely a major arc. Now notice it says EC is a diameter. So I want something for a fact that goes past that diameter. B, C, D is definitely also. B, C, E is very big. It's only missing this one little arc here. If I go B, C, E. D, B, C is another good one. E, C, D. Awesome. 
Okay, if the measure of angle EAB is 45 and the measure of angle ECD is 280, find the measure of BE. So if EAB is equal to 45, then arc BE is also 45. If I want to find BC, well, let's see, EB is 45. This is a diameter, so I know all of this adds up to 180. 180 minus 45 would give us 135. Then the central angle of BAC would also be 135. Arc DE, okay, if I'm showing you this is 80, would then be 80. Angle DAE is also 80. Arc DB, we would add 80 and 45 to get 125. That central angle of DAB, same thing, 125. And arc DC, if this is 80, then my remaining angle here would have to be 100. And so DC is 100.